Hi, it's Katrina. Mez Ainak. Mez Ainak is a very ancient city located practically in the middle of nowhere. It's in a barren region just 25 miles southeast of Afghanistan's capital and contains the country's largest copper deposit. It's also home to an ancient settlement dating back at least 5,000 years. At ground level, the 100-acre monastery complex contains over 400 Buddha statues, as well as the ruins of homes and markets. Underneath the impressive Buddhist settlement, archaeologists have found evidence of a Bronze Age site, including a primitive copper smelter. This site was situated along the legendary Silk Road, which explains the array of unique artifacts discovered there from different parts of the world, including China and India. Mez Ainak was massive, well-guarded, and immensely wealthy. A team of geologists discovered the settlement in 1973. Sadly, its historic value comes second to the desire to mine copper, and mining activities are destroying the site. Archaeologists photographed the site and excavated any artifacts that they could, but sadly the rest of it will likely be lost to history. Sloth Tunnel During the 1930s, researchers learned about a collection of large tunnels throughout South America. They assumed that the 8 to 10,000-year-old structures represented archaeological sites. In other words, that the tunnels were man-made. After all, they looked almost too perfect to have been created naturally. Plus, there were scraping marks in certain areas that looked like they had been done with tools. Experts struggled to identify any geological processes that could have been at play here, and they assumed that no animal could make a tunnel that big. But they couldn't have been more wrong. They realized this in 2010, when geologist Amilcar Adami explored one of the structures, known as Paleo Burrows, in the northwestern Brazilian state of Rondonia. It's the largest known paleo burrow in the Amazon, and it's twice as big as the next largest tunnel of its kind in Brazil, according to Andrew Jenner at Discover Magazine. Adami went into the investigation convinced that a natural process had formed the structure, but he noticed that he was looking at something that looked very deliberately made. It appeared to have claw marks on the walls, not from tools at all. And it's one of just 1,500 paleo burrows that have been identified. The smaller tunnels measure up to 5 feet in diameter, while the larger ones are as much as 6.5 feet high and 13 feet wide, and they're up to 330 feet long. So, if ancient humans didn't build these huge tunnels, then who did? Based on the markings, scientists believe that giant sloths and giant armadillos created the structures, which represent some of the only known evidence of ancient mammal burrows. The largest tunnels were likely built by massive sloths from the extinct Lestodon genus of megafauna. These creatures grew up to 15 feet long and often weighed over 5,700 pounds. Imagine a sloth that size! And as big as they were, digging the tunnels was still a monumental task. In fact, many giant sloths dedicated their entire lives exclusively to digging. And if they're as slow as we know them to be, this feat was beyond impressive. Heinrich Frank, who led a recent study on the paleo burrows, said that researchers aren't quite sure why animals were so devoted to crafting such large tunnels, especially since they were bigger than they would have needed to be in order to escape the climate, humidity, or predators. For now, their purpose and enormous size remains a mystery. Child Sacrifice Victims Two years ago, archaeologists discovered the mummy of a young man in Cajamarquilla, Peru, on the outskirts of Lima. At first, the team believed that he had died sometime between the ages of 18 and 22, but they later determined that he was actually around 35 years old when he was mummified. They nicknamed him Chabelo. He lived around 1,000 years ago when Cajamarquilla had four pyramids and was an important trade center for Peru's coastal and mountainous regions. Near Chabelo's grave, the team recently discovered the remains of 20 people who may have been human sacrifice victims, including 12 adults and 8 children. There are signs of violence on the children's bones, including skull fractures, indicating that they may have been sacrificed as part of a funerary ritual. Did this have anything to do with Chabelo? Did he want child sacrifice victims? Experts aren't sure. Naturally, almost any member of modern society is put off by the thought of killing a child. While it's hard for any sane person today to wrap their head around the concept, excavation leader Peter Van Dalen Luna explained that ancient Andean societies had a different way of seeing the world than we do. They also understood death much differently and saw it as a parallel world to the living. Around only 1% of the archaeological site has been excavated so far, and there are likely more fascinating discoveries waiting to be made. 
Researchers plan to perform DNA analysis and other tests on the remains they found to learn more about the people that were buried here. World's Oldest Stegosaur Scientists recently discovered the oldest known stegosaur fossil in Asia, and possibly the entire world. The remains belong to a previously unknown species called Bashanosaurus primitivus, which roamed the Earth around 168 million years ago. The discovery is helping researchers learn more about the origin and evolution of these dinosaurs. Who doesn't love stegosaurs? Measuring roughly 9 feet from nose to tail, the fossil represents a relatively small specimen. But experts are unsure whether the creature was an adult or a juvenile when it died, meaning it may have still been growing. It existed during the Middle Jurassic, appearing on the fossil record much earlier than the most commonly known Stegosaurus, and had more primitive physical features than other species that came along later. On the other hand, the creature also has similarities to the first armored dinosaurs, which appeared roughly 20 million years later. B. primitivus is one of the earliest diverging stegosaurs, along with the fossils of two other species that were found in China, including the Chongqing lizard. This adds to a growing body of evidence that the first stegosaurs may have evolved in Asia. If you could bring back any dinosaur, which one would you choose? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We've got lots more discoveries coming up. Egyptian Water Wells Some of ancient Egypt's pharaohs used a roadway called the Horus Military Route, which connected Egypt and Palestine. It was marked by several strongholds, including Tel El Kedwa. It was one of five fortresses in the North Sinai region. While working at the site recently, Archaeologists discovered five ancient water wells dating back to the 13th century BC. The team believes that the wells were built before the reign of Seti I, who started ruling in 1292 BC. They were found outside the walls of the fortress, which was part of the ancient Egyptian system for protecting its eastern frontier and guarding access to its northern region. Four of the five wells were filled to the brim with sand. This was to prevent the Persian army from accessing water when it invaded the region in 525 BC. Clever, huh? The fifth well, which was not filled with sand, was roughly 10 feet deep. Inside it, the team found 13 pottery rings and several clay pots dating back to Egypt's 26th dynasty, also known as the Saite period, which lasted from 664 to 525 BC. This wasn't the only thing that set the fifth well apart from the others, though. It was built haphazardly and in a style that wasn't customary for the time period, according to the archaeological excavation leader. Another team recently found a large storage center and a copper smelting workshop with several kilns at Tel El Kedwa. They date back to the same period as the wells. These discoveries are part of a larger ongoing effort to develop Egypt's North Sinai province, which contains numerous important pharaonic sites in hopes of attracting increased tourism to the region. What do you think? You want to go check it out? Transylvanian Turtle Around 66 million years ago, an asteroid slammed into what is now Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, leaving behind a massive crater measuring 110 miles in diameter and 12 miles deep. But the devastating effects extended far beyond the crater and touched every corner of the globe, wiping out an estimated 75% of all life on Earth. Not many creatures survived what's come to be known as the Cretaceous Paleogene Extinction Event, but some did, and scientists are still figuring out who these lucky few were. They recently added another species to the list during a study of a 70-million-year-old turtle fossil that was discovered in modern-day Romania. It was found at a site known as the Hateg Basin, which researchers believe was a separate island before it shifted toward what eventually became Eastern Europe. The newly described freshwater species, dubbed Dortoca vremiri, belonged to a family known as side-necked turtles. It contains 16 known species found throughout Australia, South America, and Africa. The first known fossil was found way back in 1990, and it dates back to several million years before the extinction event. Researchers believe that it survived due to the recent discovery of another species that appears to have evolved from it. D. Vremiri likely lived alongside another ancient tortoise, which unfortunately went extinct along with most terrestrial animals of the time. The surviving species likely survived because it lived primarily in fresh water, and this seems to have increased an animal's likelihood of making it through the extinction event. What can we say? Turtles are pretty tough. Out of place plants. The plant genus Ceratopetalum contains nine known modern species, 
which are all found in eastern Australia and New Guinea. And until recently, researchers believed that the family these plants come from only ever existed in the southern hemisphere, including during ancient times. Which is why they were surprised to discover a previously unknown fossilized Ceratopetalum species on Susha Island in Washington state of all places. The fruit lived during the late Cretaceous period, which lasted from 100 million to 66 million years ago, when the dinosaurs went extinct. Its discovery is causing experts to rethink the ancient distribution of Ceratopetalum plants, especially when it comes to answering the question of how some species ended up in the Northern Hemisphere. It truly goes to show how even the experts know relatively little about our planet's past. These plants thrive in tropical environments, which you certainly won't find in modern-day Washington state. The genus is part of a group known as Paleo-Antarctic Rainforest Lineages, or PARLs, which first appeared when the supercontinent Gondwana still existed. This means these plants have been around a long time. They spread northward to Australia, South America, and Southern Africa as the region occupying what is now Antarctica got colder. Now, scientists are trying to determine whether the fossils found in Washington reflect a bigger spread than they realized or if they happen to be a few stray plants that made their way unusually far from home. Study co-author Brian Atkinson compared the discovery to finding a penguin in North America. The next step is to perform additional research into this little study topic to hopefully learn more about it. Prehistoric Drum 5,000 years ago, three children died and were buried together in what is now Yorkshire, England. Their grave was discovered in 2015 during a routine excavation at the village of Burton Agnes. In it, archaeologists found a drum that they believe was a piece of sculptural art rather than an actual musical instrument. It's similar to three others that were found just 15 miles away in Folkton back in 1889. Project curator Jennifer Wexler told CNN that the artifacts speak to an art form that was apparently very common throughout the British Isles during the 3rd millennium BC. The more recently discovered drum is covered in motifs that resemble similar objects that have been found in Ireland and Scotland further indicating how widespread the artistic style was. The Burton Agnes children and the drum date back to sometime between 3005 and 2890 BC, around the same time that Stonehenge was built. They are around 500 years older than the previously discovered Folkton drums. The oldest child was between 10 and 12 years old, while the others were aged between 6 and 9 and between 3 and 5. Archaeologists found the two younger kids holding hands, they were positioned in the arms of the eldest child. A very touching and sad scene. Their remains will undergo DNA analysis to help establish their relationship to each other. The team believes that the drum may have been a children's toy. They described it as the most important piece of prehistoric art found in Britain in the last century, noting its exceptional rarity. At the time the kids died, burials were extremely rare, and they were typically reserved for children and grave goods were equally scarce, especially in the case of the elaborately decorated drum, which could easily be considered a once-in-a-lifetime find. Egyptian Notepads Archaeologists have just announced the discovery of the largest collection of ancient Egyptian notepads since the early 20th century. Found in the lost city of Athribis in central Egypt, the items include over 18,000 inscribed pottery fragments, many of which appear to have been written by students. Known as Ostraka, the inked shards were made using more affordable and accessible writing materials than papyrus, including pieces of broken jars and other vessels. The so-called notepads include shopping lists, trading records, receipts, copies of literature and writing and drawing lessons. The notepads contain writing in an array of languages, including Greek, Arabic and Coptic, which according to researchers reflects the city's multicultural and perhaps turbulent history. Based on the amount of academic pieces, it seems as though the Athribis site represents the remnants of an ancient school. The scholarly slabs include lists of months, numbers, math problems, and writing and grammar exercises. They also contained a bird alphabet, where a different assigned bird corresponded with each letter. Most of the notes were written in an administrative script called demotic, which was used primarily during the reign of Ptolemy XII, more famously known as Cleopatra's father. He ruled from 81 to 59 BC, and then again from 55 to 51 BC. At the time, Athribis was the capital of its state, and while Demotic was the most popular writing system, schoolchildren were taught a simplified form of hieroglyphics. 
Some of the writing exercises were repeated, with the student writing the same characters over and over on the front and back of the slab. Perhaps it was the ancient's version of making a badly behaved student write on the chalkboard. Hyena teeth. A pair of fossilized teeth were discovered in Canada's Yukon Territory in the Old Crow Basin back in the 1970s. The teeth were pulled from an area once entirely covered by ice, along with 50,000 other mammal fossils that have been collected over the past century. Because the basin was frozen for so long, all these fossils remained amazingly preserved. And although the actual bodies of the hyenas weren't found, their teeth have been enough for scientists to learn what they were doing in North America. Even though the teeth were found in the 1970s, it wasn't until quite recently that researchers from the University of Buffalo identified them. The teeth had been kept in the Canadian Museum of Nature, collecting dust in a back room. But thanks to scientists taking a renewed interest in them, the teeth have now been analyzed. Researchers identified the teeth as belonging to the Chasma porthetes genus, more formally known as running hyenas. They differ from modern hyenas because they had extremely long legs that made them much quicker than their relatives in Africa. Another interesting point is that researchers have never found evidence of hyenas in the Arctic region of Canada before. Their fossils have only been found in Africa, Eurasia, and the southern parts of North America. We now know that during the Ice Age, when sea levels were much lower than today, gangs of hyenas roamed all the way from their ancestral home in Asia to the northernmost territories in North America. They took the same route that humans did 15,000 years ago, only about 1.4 million years before we made the trek. The Antarctic Ghost Base Deep in the icy darkness of Antarctica, there is an abandoned ghost base still running vital scientific experiments without any humans there. The remote science station had to evacuate during the polar winter because a chasm in the ice shelf was opening underneath it. The entire base was under threat of literally falling into a giant void beneath the ice. It's called the Halley Scientific Research Station, and it's been operating on the Brunt Ice Shelf ever since 1956. But believe it or not, these ice chasms are such a problem that it's been relocated and rebuilt several times. It was here at the fourth station in 1985 where scientists detected the hole in the ozone. In 2017, the mobile buildings had to close at their newest location, just 12 miles from the old location because of the growing hole beneath them. Ever since, scientists have figured out how to occupy the base for only part of the year, while allowing their experiments to run through the winter without them there. These days, generators supply enough electricity to the station to allow scientists in the UK to monitor everything from a distance. The result is a frozen ghost station, devoid of human life, running its own scientific experiments. Black Worms Every year on Mount Rainier, billions of black ice worms appear from the ice and start crawling around. Scientists know almost nothing about the worms, nor why they wriggle out of the ice every year. Most of the time, the glacial slopes of Mount Rainier are lifeless. There's ice and snow and little else. It's only in the summer, as the snow starts to melt, that billions of worms, as small as scraps of thread, come to the surface. And even though it happens annually, scientists still haven't figured out why. But scientists do know a few things. They know this is the only species of worm that spends its entire life living in ice. They know that as the glaciers on the mountain begin to shrink, the worms are at risk of going extinct. They also know that despite living in the ice for months at a time, they can't actually tolerate freezing temperatures. Their entire existence is on the edge of tolerance. They remain perfectly fine while buried in the ice, like living in a warm igloo, but freezing winds in the warmer months can kill them. Scientists don't know how they survive the winter, but they believe they eat bacteria and algae in the summer as they squirm along the surface of the ice. Other than that, the worms remain a total mystery. Ice Age Beaver At the bottom of a frozen gravel pit in southeastern Manitoba, an anonymous man came across the bone of a monster, the likes of which you wouldn't believe. The creature lived across North America during the Ice Age, but went extinct a few thousand years ago. It was larger than a black bear, vicious enough to easily kill a person, and yet it was just a beaver. But it was a gigantic beaver. The bone at the bottom of the pit belonged to a prehistoric relative of the modern beaver, but the founder thought it was a pig bone. 
They brought it to the local museum during their lunch hour because they noticed it had a tooth like a tusk and thought it might be ancient. The man who found the bone had never even heard of giant beavers before. And to be honest, most people haven't. So far, this is only the fourth piece of evidence that these giant monsters lived in Canada. When compared to a modern beaver, it was truly huge. A modern beaver could easily bite a person's hand off with their huge teeth, which they use to bite through wood. But this ancient relative could easily cause significantly more damage with one bite. It weighed about 300 pounds and could grow to at least six feet in length. These days, beavers only weigh around 20 pounds and don't grow bigger than a medium-sized dog. The ancient species went extinct at the end of the last ice age around 10,000 years ago. What do you think about this enormous beaver? Let me know in the comments below. Solar storm trapped in the ice. A research team from the Lund University in Sweden analyzed ice cores from Greenland and Antarctica and found evidence of a bizarre cosmic phenomenon. They found that a solar storm, one of extreme magnitude, took place 9,200 years ago. It's confusing scientists because the storm happened during a quiet phase in the sun's life, in which they believed such events didn't occur. Up until now, scientists thought solar storms only happen during sunspot cycles, when the star becomes extremely active. But judging by what the researchers found in the ice, that's clearly not the case. They found in the ice cores traces of radioactive isotopes that are only produced when high-energy cosmic particles reach the planet's surface. Here's what's really scary about the discovery. The solar storm released so much radioactivity that if it had happened today, it could have wiped out power across the globe. Every city on Earth would have been plunged into darkness, and satellites would have fallen from the sky from radioactive damage. Air traffic would have been in serious trouble, and astronauts would have had their communication systems fail. Basically, a solar storm of this magnitude would have caused pandemonium on Earth. We may have missed the last one, but another could come at literally any second. Five minutes, five days, or 500,000 years from now. Patterns in the ice. The phenomenon of ice needles is pretty fascinating. They form during an imbalance between the temperature of soil and the temperature of the air. When the temperature drops at night, some types of dirt will contract while water in the soil is drawn upward. The result is billions of tiny frozen needles sticking out of the ground. It's shocking to see and is surprisingly helping scientists learn more about the planet Mars. If you've ever gotten up early in the morning and walked across a field and heard crunching underfoot from the frosty grass, you were probably walking over ice needles. It happens all the time. But in some more extreme places in the world, the recurring pattern of ice needles create delicate designs like geoglyphs. As the needles freeze, they push very small rocks onto one side or the other. Over a very long time, these rocks become clustered in geological formations that look as though they were made by human hands. Looking at one of these clusters from above, you would think it was an ancient civilization trying to draw a picture using tiny rocks. What scientists find amazing and confusing is that the same patterns made by ice needles on Earth have been seen on Mars. The obvious takeaway is that Mars definitely once had oceans and that there is still moisture in the soil. When it gets colder at night, that moisture is sucked out into the form of very small ice needles. These needles over thousands of years have created complex patterns all across the surface. Mount Everest Ice Problem There have been plenty of amazing things discovered on Everest frozen in ice, from the bodies of hikers to leftover equipment from ancient expeditions. But there probably won't be very many more. According to National Geographic, a new study has found that the South Coal Glacier of Mount Everest has lost half its ice mass since the 1990s. The highest glacier on the tallest mountain on the planet has lost 2,000 years of ice in only three decades. What that means is that all the ice that accumulated over 2,000 years has melted in just 30 years. To put this as simply as possible, there won't be ice on Everest for very much longer. These findings weren't easy to come by. National Geographic and Rolex Perpetual Planet Everest Expedition brought together over 34 international scientists and teams of Sherpas to take ice core samples and biological samples all over the mountain. They created a very detailed map of Everest's glacial history. 
They were able to look at the amount of ice on the mountain, where the ice was, over the past 2,000 years. They found the oldest layer of ice on the very top of their core samples to be 2,000 years old. That means that everything that had been laid down after is already gone. There is no word on how much longer Everest will remain icy, but when looking at the numbers, we can estimate about 20 more years before the whole mountain is dry. The Scimitar Cat A decade ago in Canada's frozen Klondike region, a mysterious bone was found in the permafrost at a Dominion Creek mining camp. It was 2011 when the bone was found, and yet scientists are still making discoveries because of it. Researchers are unsure exactly how old the bone is, with experts guessing about 50,000 years. It belonged to a predatory animal that lived alongside the woolly mammoth, the woolly rhino, and extinct North American horses. This animal was the scimitar cat, a ferocious feline you've probably never heard of. It was a type of saber-toothed cat, but without the great big front teeth. It was unique in that it had great eyesight and increased endurance compared to a lot of other big cats. Unlike big felines today, like cheetahs and lions, who can only use one burst of amazing speed to catch their prey, the scimitar cat could run pretty much forever. It evolved with the ability to chase its prey until its prey collapsed. This thing would chase a horse until the horse fell down from exhaustion. Sadly, we don't know much else about these animals. There have only been a handful of scimitar cat fossils found, so not much for researchers to study. We don't even know how many of these cats once roamed North America during the Ice Age. World War II Plain and the Alps A melting glacier in Switzerland recently revealed a plane from World War II that crashed in the Alps. It was 2018 when a heat wave caused massive amounts of ice on the Gauli Glacier to simply vanish. This revealed the ruined bones of a C-52 Sky Trooper Dakota. On November 19, 1946, the plane had been traveling from Austria to Italy when it smacked right into the glacier. The collision was at 10,990 feet, making the plane wreckage impossible to recover. However, there was a rescue operation. Four crew members and eight passengers walked away with nothing but minor injuries, being rescued six days later. There wasn't a single fatality. They survived by drinking snow water and eating the few chocolate bars they had to share between them. In 2012, a trio of hikers came across the plane's propeller on the glacier, but they couldn't see the rest of the plane. It wasn't until six years later when enough of the ice melted to reveal the entire thing. It's in surprisingly good shape thanks to being stuck in a block of ice for over 70 years. Arctic Ice Camp there's been a significant amount of submarine activity in the Arctic ice during the past few years. We've seen a trio of Russian submarines break through the ice, and even the U.S. has been busy creating ice camps and practicing their own submarine maneuvers in the Arctic. In fact, scientists with the University of Alaska Fairbanks helped to provide ice and weather expertise to the U.S. Navy in 2020 during Arctic Ocean training. The Navy constructed Camp Sea Dragon a temporary hub on an ice sheet in the middle of the Arctic Ocean. The camp had more than 45 personnel, serving as a command center for submarine operations. They also held under-ice navigational exercises for their submarines. This has helped the Navy learn how to travel undetected beneath the ice in case of some Arctic conflict. Egyptians and the Grand Canyon The Grand Canyon is one of the most famous natural wonders in the world. Six million people visit it every year, and it is approximately 277 miles long and 18 miles wide at its thickest point. There are many nooks and crannies that haven't been fully explored yet. The Hopi Indians who lived in the region once believed the canyon was a gateway to the afterlife. And there are rumors that this magical place may very well have been the home of an underground civilization from across the planet. Explorers from the 1900s claim to have found evidence that suggests a group of ancient Egyptians were living in the Grand Canyon way before Europeans ever found North America. The shocking discovery goes back to 1909. The legendary Smithsonian Institution explorer G. E. Kincaid allegedly found a series of canyons during an expedition with anthropologist S. A. Jordan. The entrance to the cavern was nearly invisible and very hard to access but they finally managed to squeeze themselves inside, at which point they discovered enormous caves filled to the brim with artifacts. These artifacts included statues, weapons, granaries still full of seeds, 
and countless other relics from an ancient civilization. The caves themselves were big enough for thousands of people to live inside. But the most astounding part was that the artifacts were clearly not Native American in design, but looked exactly like ancient Egyptian artifacts. But how did they wind up in the Grand Canyon? That's a mystery that has still never been solved. Nobody knows what happened to the alleged artifacts, and the Smithsonian denies every aspect of the story, and it's been argued that both Kincaid and Jordan were wiped from the records. Some believe this is a massive cover-up to maintain the status quo of human history. But if this was all true, it means that ancient Egyptians could have managed to arrive to the Americas and perhaps lived here amongst the native people. This would add to the list of rumors that ancient people arrived to the Americas thousands of years ago, such as the Chinese and the Sumerians. But of course, it has been impossible to prove if this could actually be true or if this is just speculation. For many, the Grand Canyon is the perfect place to hide a secret passage to another dimension or even to a secret reptilian underworld. Rupak The archaeological site of Rupak Marca Culpi is known more simply as the Machu Picchu of Lima. Just like Machu Picchu, this place was built at the very top of a mountain with a panoramic view for hundreds of miles in the distance. And yet it wasn't created by the Inca. It was instead a settlement associated with the Atavillos culture. What makes it so incredible is that if it were in better condition, it would be just as mystifying as Machu Picchu. Yet because of its bad state of decay, very few people even know it exists. Los Atavillos culture emerged after the collapse of the Wadi Empire sometime around the year 1100 and began to establish permanent settlements throughout the Lima Valley. One of these was on the summit of Rupak Hill. That's at an elevation of roughly 10,000 feet above sea level. Just like Machu Picchu, the main activity here was related to worship. At least it was at the start. Funerary rites were performed on the hill with the larger complex facilitating everything that went on with the ceremonies. But between 1470 and 1533, Los Atavillos were attacked by the Inca and changed Rupak to more of an administrative hub. Nonetheless, that didn't stop the Inca from absorbing the Atavillos into their empire, leading to the abandonment of Rupak. The Serpent Mound The largest surviving effigy mound in the world is located in southern Ohio. It's called the Serpent Mound, and it's the biggest lump of earth anywhere on earth shaped like an animal. It's over 1,348 feet long, built by the Native Americans roughly 2,000 years ago. It was discovered in the late 1800s and excavated several times since, but its origins are still a mystery. Some believe it was made in the year 300 BC. As you may have guessed by the name, Serpent Mound looks just like an enormous serpent. It looks like a snake with its head pointed east and its tail pointed west, curled in a spiral. Between the head and the tail are seven winding coils. In total, with the coils straightened, the snake stretches a quarter of a mile long and at some places is nearly 25 feet in width. The snake itself is overlooking Ohio Brush Creek, less than 80 miles from Cincinnati. And what makes it even more mysterious is that it's directly on the place where a meteor impacted the planet 300 million years ago. As of right now, experts have no clue what the mound represents. It was obviously made to look like a snake, but whether it was for spiritual purposes, if it had something to do with the comet crater, or if it was more to do with astronomy and the solstices, experts can't seem to agree. Lost Roman City Archaeologists were shocked when they discovered the ancient city of Neapolis after a devastating storm. This storm swept through the Mediterranean and revealed stones on the seafloor off the coast of Tunisia. This isn't that well known of an ancient city, especially since it's been submerged for centuries, but it was known to archaeologists as a thriving port of entry to North Africa. Neapolis was originally founded by Julius Caesar before his war against Pompey, also known as the Third Mithridatic War and the prelude to Caesar's civil war. But far more interesting perhaps than the city itself is how it ended up underwater. Researchers believe it happened in the 4th century AD when a tsunami struck the port city and literally sucked it into the sea. It was like a giant sandcastle sitting on the beach and high tide came in, washing it away and leaving no trace behind. And this wasn't a small settlement by any means. 
investigators used drone imagery and radar technology to completely map the old Roman city. It had complex suburbs, streets, and industrial zones. This was a very big metropolis, and it was wiped off the face of the earth by a sudden, unexpected natural disaster. Do you think it's possible that there are other lost cities that can be found along the coast? Could this happen to any current coastal cities? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Maya City Citadel Scientists recently discovered a secret neighborhood in one of the largest Maya cities of all time. I am talking about Tikal, located in what is today Guatemala. It was one of the biggest and most important settlements in the ancient Maya Empire. It reached its peak between 200 and 900 AD, with a maximum of around 90,000 residents. In modern times, Tikal is hidden in dense jungle foliage. It's been difficult for researchers to fully comprehend the scope of the city, but using new LiDAR scanning equipment, they have found a new neighborhood. More shocking is the fact that the ruins inside this secret neighborhood are almost identical in style to buildings found in the ancient city of Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan is the ancient metropolis in modern Mexico that was built by a mysterious civilization who came centuries before the Aztec. This discovery has led to a lot of questions. Researchers don't know why a neighborhood in Guatemala from over 1,000 years ago looks almost identical to a neighborhood from a city in Mexico, thought to be roughly 1,500 years old. According to Brown University anthropologist Stephen Houston, the neighborhood is direct evidence of interactions between Tikal and Teotihuacan. It may even have been a sort of primitive embassy set up in the Mayan city. But how they met each other and what their business together may have been is still a total mystery. The Temple of Hercules Archaeologists with the University of Sevilla in Spain believe they may have just found the infamous Lost Temple of Hercules. They found archaeological evidence that the area between Chiclana de la Frontera and San Fernando in Andalusia was once an ancient coastline much more accessible than it is today. They have uncovered the remains of a massive building almost 1,000 feet long and 500 feet wide. What's truly incredible is that the structure is only visible at low tide, confirming that when it was built, the area would have been significantly higher above sea level. Researchers then used light detection and ranging techniques to see the outline of the submerged structure. While they don't know 100% what it is, it seems to fit perfectly with the historical counts of the Temple of Hercules. The temple was a pilgrimage site thousands of years ago, visited as recently as during the Roman Empire by Julius Caesar. But somewhere along the line, the temple vanished into obscurity. Descriptions of the temple have it being somewhere in southern Spain, and being so huge and impressive that it shocked and dazzled any who beheld it with their own eyes. It could very well be that a flood or earthquake caused the temple to be submerged, leaving nothing behind for modern archaeologists except a vague outline and some broken stones. Stone Heap of the Wildcat Rujum El Hiri translates to English as Stone Heap of the Wildcat. This is the name of a huge megalithic monument in Israel, in the occupied region of the Golan Heights. It's hard to say exactly when this mysterious stone circle was made. By dating sediment samples and studying discarded shards of pottery, archaeologists believe it was sometime between 3800 and 2700 BC. It's been very hard to get an approximate date. The site itself consists of half circles surrounding a central mound. It took at least 40,000 tons of volcanic material stacked over six feet high to create these circles. The one part that's been dated correctly is the mound in the center. It was added between 1,000 and 2,000 years after the outer circles were originally put down. The mound was made around 1500 BC and once stood 12 feet high. Today, everything here is flat. This place has been worn down by time. And unfortunately, archaeologists can't agree on what it was ever used for. It could have been used by the ancient Zoroastrians for astronomical observations. It could have been a burial site, though no bodies have been found, or it may have been used as a calendar, and it could have been employed in funerary rites to help the dead reach the underworld, or maybe everything at once. The Gigantia Temples The megaliths found at the Gigantia Temples in Malta are some of the biggest of the ancient world, exceeding over 15 feet long and weighing over 50 tons each. For centuries, the locals believed these temples were constructed by giants. In fact, 
The local legend about how these temples were made involves a giant and some beans. The story says that a giantess who feasted on nothing but broad beans and honey had a child with an ordinary, non-giant man. Related to motherhood and the feminine, it is believed the temples were possibly the site of an Earth Mother Goddess fertility cult. 5,600 years ago, these temples were used in ceremonial fertility rites. At least that's based on the figurines, statues, and other offerings archaeologists have excavated from the site. The temples themselves are still in very good condition despite their age. This is impressive considering they date back to around 3600 BC. That makes the Gigantia temples some of the oldest freestanding monuments anywhere, even older than Stonehenge and the Pyramids of Giza. Have you ever been to Malta? Let me know in the comments below! Tintagel Castle Nobody really knows the whole story of Tintagel Castle in the UK. There is very little of the ruins still standing, not much more than a crumbling stone entrance and the hint of walls rising up from the great sea cliffs. Some say it may have been an Iron Age fortress. Others think it could have been constructed by the Romans 2,000 years ago. The Romans definitely did use it for a while, since archaeologists have found signposts along major roads and old coins in the dirt from the 4th century. However, when it was built and its purpose are lost to history. It may have been nothing more than a fancy residence for a local magnate or a formidable shelter for the entire community. Regardless of where it came from, the castle was used well into the Dark Ages. Archaeologists have discovered pottery shards from as far away as Greece, Turkey and North Africa. Whoever occupied this castle during the 5th century AD was trading with the Eastern Roman Empire. Then, in the 6th century, the castle appears to have been used as the court of King Mark of Cornwall. Shortly after, in 709, the failed kingdom of Dumnonia collapsed and the site was abandoned. It wasn't reoccupied again for nearly 1,000 years, until Richard, Earl of Cornwall, reoccupied it in 1233. The history of the castle from here is well documented. It exchanged hands multiple times during the 1300s, but then it started to drift into a ruin in the 15th century. It was manned briefly in 1580 to guard against the Spanish, and then was left alone. The Grottoes of Maijishan The Maijishan Grottoes are a series of 194 caves cut directly into the side of a cliff in China. This place is arguably the most captivating example of rock-cut architecture in the entire country, complete with over 7,200 sculptures. It's made all the more impressive considering construction began just shy of 2,000 years ago in the later Qin era, circa 384 AD. The caves weren't explored in modern times until 1952 by a team of archaeologists from Beijing. They discovered much about this mysterious place's history. Because of its location along an old route connecting east and west, the cliff grottoes would have overlooked traders moving goods from China's far east all the way to the southern tip of India. It was a crossroads where people from the Indian subcontinent and other parts of Asia moved freely. It also connected to the Silk Road, meaning there was lots of traffic moving into Central Asia and beyond to the Middle East. But why carve a bunch of caves into the side of a cliff? Researchers believe cave shrines in China were used to either worship one's ancestors or the natural deities. But when Buddhism came to China, bringing along the ancient trade roads, the shrines became a staple in Chinese religious architecture. In the 6th century, Buddhism exploded in China. The caves, which had been carved hundreds of years earlier, were slowly converted into sanctuaries for Buddhist monks. There was once a community here of over 300 monks living and worshipping in the grottoes. Thanks for watching! Have you ever visited any of these ancient sites? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already! See you next time! Bye!